Okay, welcome back. Um, as you guys know, we're uh, building a small base for a Normandy setting, and I've moved a little bit ahead on it. But um, for those of you who think, and as I posted that between now and Christmas, it would all be all of drab and allied vehicles and what have you, I'm not going to neglect the German um, tanks by any stretch. This is going to be part of our um, a couple of episodes. It'll just be a painting exercise. But this is a great kit. Reason being, very, very few parts in here. Maybe uh, 60 or 70 parts. Um, well, well detailed. Comes with a bit of photo etch. Uh, it is here on the box. A little bit of photo etch. And um, certainly the King Tiger, because of, I guess, the Takam and Ming um, popularity here at the shop. Um, they've also jumped on and, you know, they, I mean, look at this kit. I mean, it, it's what they call a paper panzer, I think. Um, one of those ones that, oh, was on a serviette drawing in a restaurant, I think, during the war. But anyway, as far as a kit goes... Like there's not a lot of parts and um so what i'm gonna do between now and say christmas or or maybe mid-january is um is get this all together and then show all you guys some neat uh paper panzer paint schemes and and you know we'll, we'll work on this together but as you can see there's very very few parts so we won't get bogged down in the construction we will just um I'll build it up quick on a weekend, say a Thursday to Sunday. And then, um, like I say, it's it's a way episodes away from what Dave and I are doing with the olive drab Normandy settings. But um, certainly I don't want to say that I'm not going to do any more German with our with our episodes, because we certainly are. And, and this will be the next subject, and it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to turn this into a fun exercise. And, you know, working at the Hornet Hobbies, um, of course, I get to see what sells upstairs. And there's a Ming product called Toon Tanks. And they come out with, they've come out with a Sherman and a KV-2, Tiger 1, and a King Tiger so far. And they're the most popular kits in the shop. So they, we're all having fun with this hobby right now. And, and the addition of the Ming... Uh, Tune tanks, plus a little bit of this. Um, you know, moving forward in the next six months, we're going to have a lot of fun. So um, I think even Ming has announced that I think they're doing a T-34 as well as a Panzer III. Um, so, like I say, in the next six months, we'll probably do an episode on a tune tank as well. So, so let's enjoy it. It's hobby time. And um, let's get started. So... What I'll do is I'll walk you through where we are with the Normandy uh, Sherman tank base. And I'll do some airbrushing on this and some vegetation. So I'll, I'll put our little paper panzer away. But just to keep in mind, it's a, it's a neat kit, not a lot of parts. Start on a Thursday, you're finished construction no later than a Sunday. And then you have some... And then you got a month to paint it, it'll be a blast. So keep that kit in mind. I've gone through it, looks like a beauty. It's something that Adam Wilder would be leaping all over, I'm sure. <laughs> Adam likes that kind of stuff too. So, all right, so what we have here is, uh, I've moved ahead a little bit strictly because you guys don't want to sit and watch me airbrushing a black base. Um, so what I'm going to do is this little quarter here is I'm going to airbrush that and, um, and then switch back to this to paint it the proper earth tones um, while this is drying. So I've moved ahead a little bit, but that's only for the sake of the camera work. And um, you're not going to miss out on anything with the fact that you see this flat black with, with a bit of grass on it. I'm going to duplicate that, but... Um, because it takes a while for the glue underneath this grass to dry, well, just because of filming, 
Um, I've, like I say, I've put this grass on a couple hours ago and it's dry now, so we'll be able to get right on it. And this, of course, is where our little road was. So let's get started. We'll get the airbrush out and I'll just point out the products that we're gonna use so that there's no, uh, there's no mystery there. But what I wanna do is this sand that's represented here is, is earth from the garden, about six inches down. The reason, as I've pointed out, is because of the waste of animals, the uh, raccoons and pussy cats and all that. So you got to get the pure sand down below about six inches. So then I push it down into this, um, as you guys remember, when this plaster was wet. And then I have added a little bit more since then with using a tight bond cement. And tight bond, or you can use uh, LePage's white glue, whatever, and you just sprinkle that on and then put the sand on top of that. As opposed to using this method, which in the, in the um, placing of sand, you don't want to use these spritzer bottles with, with cement in them. These have a, a great use coming up, but for putting on sand, it's, it's not what you want. And I'm going to explain why on our little drawing here. Um, when we, here's the ground, and then we put all the stones down, and that's gonna create a shadow under here. When I go to paint this black, there's gonna be a shadow that forms here, a nice little contrast. When I lay the white glue down, then put the sand on top. So what's going to happen when I paint it flat black is this area in here gets that contrasting shadow. And when I start to paint this beige in a few minutes, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you use this application for gluing the sand down with the scenic cement spraying on top, here's what happens in those cases. And it ruins the groundwork. These are the little sand pebbles. The glue is sprayed down like so, and it forms a skin on top of the groundwork. And then all you're really gonna get is this skin instead of these lovely shadows here. So do not put the sand down and then sit here and squeeze and spray paint the glue on top of the sand because it's gonna be a disaster. Your groundwork isn't going to come out um, the way you want it. The reality is it takes the same amount of time to do it in sample A as sample B. This is going to be a fantastic result, and this is going to be a mediocre result. I'm not going to knock these Woodland Scenic things, because I use these all the time for different, different applications, just not for putting sand on dioramas. But as far as doing all kinds of other things, these are the perfect product. So um, I will demonstrate these at a later episode using these properly. Um, now, one of the things that I like to use are flocking static grass. Um, it's a great color. That's one of the products I use. And I, then I like to use these because the grass is a little bit longer. This is great for um, 72 scale landing strips, um, early season grass growing in 35th scale, um, especially around the houses and what have you. And this stuff, this knock um, wild grass is a little bit longer in length, about, oh, half an inch or so. So out in, the, out in the fields of Normandy and stuff, this is better for the application for that. So have a jar of this in your inventory, have the grass in your inventory, and then also to this uh, Scenescapes grass, which we'll demonstrate on here, is also um, a great, great product to use. So I'm gonna demonstrate airbrushing this to the ground color that we need and then we put the grass on afterwards so let me fire up the airbrush 
I'll get the right colors inside. I'll demonstrate all of that. Okay, in a second. so here's what Thanks. we're gonna do. We're gonna, uh, as as I told you, I painted this black just for uh, speed on the film. But just to demonstrate, I'm gonna f now paint this quarter of it black and then switch back and start painting this all ground color and what have you. So I'm gonna paint it black. The color I use is NATO black, but you can use Tamiya XF1. Uh, you can use a dark, dark gray. Because what you're going to do, and, and why do I paint it black, is the following. You want to create shadows underneath these stones. Not unlike our drawing here in drawing number A, where we have these shadows. What this black is doing is creating these shadows. Unfortunately, it's painting these black as well. These are individual granulars of sand. So we're going to create this shadow with this paint. Then I'm going to go over in a minute and paint them all beige. But you'll see this piece of groundwork is going to come alive. So there's the NATO black mixed to thinner, uh, lacquer thinner, but you can all use, also use XF, or not XF, uh, A20. Um, that's no problem. And I mix it 50-50 in the airbrush. And PSI on this is about 20 pounds. So we'll just quickly do that. And you don't want any of the white plaster showing whatsoever. Unfortunately, here's the wind test. It was spraying with the PSI of around 20. It's going to blow away any stones that are loosey-goosey on here. Another good airbrush for doing this is a Badger 350. The disadvantage is that it's siphon feed, so it's uh, it's a little. It has a bucket that hangs down here. It sometimes gets in the way. But a Badger 350 airbrush for doing what I'm doing right now is is ideal. Some of us may have them sitting in the drawer from back when. But um, certainly don't hesitate to bring them out again for, for this kind of application. Now I'll just blow off all the grass. Okay, now, as talked about earlier, these are going to have evergreen... Um, 30 thou uh, borders around our our base once we drop it into the, our framework so don't panic that, that this is going to look like pink foam in our finished product obviously it's not it's going to be nicely framed all the way around it's going to look beautiful okay so once we get the black on then we can take our evergreen or our evergreen or knock um grass we glue that on we, we just put a bead of white glue on i like to use weld bond just clump it on now there's different ways of making the grass rise up uh static you know through static making the grass stand i pay that no mind i just put the grass on and let it sit i mean this the grass that i've planted this afternoon looks fine for a military setting. If you want to do a different type of setting, sort of like the uh, nine holes at Augusta, uh, that's when you're going to get into your applicators and you're, you know, making the grass stand right up. But I, I don't worry about it at all. The fact that this is loosey-goosey on here, it, it's going to look fine in the end. And then, of course, I've taken away the pillars 
which we had on earlier. But they just fit in. I just I just dislodged them earlier when the when the uh, plaster had hardened on our last episode, and then wiggled them a little bit, and they've popped right out. And now they are easy to place back in again. So um, I'm gonna get on painting this the proper groundwork. Then I'll go to the grass. And timelines on this is pretty simple. Um, you could sort of build a base. If you started on a Thursday, you'd be finished by Saturday, including the drying time. Because the painting of a base this small, as you can see, it, was, it takes minutes. So building a whole base like this should take you no more than three days. And that's with the drying time. So um, don't worry that you've got a, the U.S. Nationals coming up or a, or a show that you're used to going to and it's two weeks away and you want to put your model on a base, there's no problem with that timeline as far as producing something like this. I, I, I think that one of the reasons the guys hesitate on these things, believe it or not, is they don't want to clean their airbrush. You know, they're using blacks and greens and browns and gaki and lots of different colored paints and they feel they have to spend hours cleaning their airbrush. And, and that is, Nonsense. It doesn't take any time to clean my airbrush. I've just put black in here. I'm going to turn it upside down in the garbage can over here, put a little thinner through it, and switch right over to the beige color. So, as far as cleaning goes, when I'm finished this project tonight, then I'll clean the needle, clean the nozzles, and what have you. But as far as switching colors from black to beige to green for the grass, there's going to be no breakdown in this airbrush. There's just a quick spin through on the thinner and then rotating the color through. So anyway, I'll load up, I'll get rid of the black, switch to my proper ground color, and um, we'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm going to start a groundwork color, uh, to me a 57 buff. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray on the tops of the sand. And I'm not going to be able to avoid not getting underneath this sand, but it's it, it's going to be there. You know, there's going to be five or six coats as I do this. But anyway, I'm going to spray, and then it, like I say, if I did it this way, the gr it would be terrible. the The beige paint would just sit on the top here, whereas this way, this little area in here is going to create a little bit of a shadow. And it's going to really help the groundwork. Now, I'm also going to add washes uh, from ammo and from MIG ammo and probably some AK stuff. And you might not be able to recognize um, these little shadows any longer when I'm all said and done. But certainly if I did it in this format with the bottle, um, it would just be a beige piece of groundwork. Whereas this, doing it in this style, there's any number of colors that are going to come out typical of groundwork. So just, just, I just want to reinforce how important it is to do it this way as opposed to this way. So I've loaded up the airbrush. I'm all ready to paint. I have, to me, a buff in here. So I'm just going to remove my IKEA base so that I don't get any mud on it, any overspray. I spray, I've done the buff in here with about 50% thinner and I'm spraying at about 17 pounds PSI and I'm just putting a light coat on here and like I say there's going to be a lot of coats of paint on here in the end so don't don't worry that it suddenly doesn't look like Normandy. It's gonna look like Normandy by the time we're finished painting here. And it doesn't matter if you paint right over top of the grass, it doesn't matter one iota with the buff. 
don't try to avoid it. Because it doesn't matter. I'm going to be airbrushing it all green anyway. All right, so there's our first spray of color. And I'm not, I never measured, I never took a measurement of time, but I would imagine I was spray painting for no la no more than two minutes there. Maybe a little longer, but um, anyway, so now you can see how the groundwork is definitely taking on shadows effects. You can see the shadows. And um, that's back to our little drawings you can see how this has happened. You can see the shadow of the earth tones. Now I'm gonna change the earth tone to, to me a uh, 59. Lots and lots of thinner in my airbrush this time. The mixture might be 90% thinner, 10% paint. And this is just a typical way that you see groundwork outside at a football field with natural grass or you know, out in the bush or wherever, um, you'll see that their groundwork has a lot of colors in it. And so I'm going to go with this khaki, and then I'm going to probably do one more color of the combination of buff and khaki together, and then start spray painting this grass. And as you can see here, our stone wall still fits, and, and it's going to uh, come alive. And then once Dave finishes his Sherman, I will then, and this is a very important part, I will take colors from Dave's groundwork colors, um, those powders that he was using at the last episode, and also add those into the groundwork so that there's a beautiful marriage between the colors Dave has on his tank and the colors used in our groundwork. So that, that'll be our final um, episode on the blending of the or in the marriage of the colors so it won't happen during this episode but I will get to the khaki and then get to the green on the grass it's obviously um, going to be June July or August when this scene is happening so we'll keep it rich nice and green so anyway I will load up the airbrush again with a little bit of khaki and I'll be right okay, back so I'm using to me a number 49 khaki one of the things also, too, is uh, Dave needs to know, Dave, who's doing the Sherman, needs to know the colors that I use so that he can adapt these colors as well onto his weathering um, pattern. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised if, if before he's all finished, he takes these two colors and just with about, like I say, 90 to 95% thinner, just give his little Sherman tank a little spray. Like I say, it's all for marriage purposes. It, you don't want to make it not blend with the whole nine yards here. So I've loaded up the airbrush with 49 only. And I'll just give it a little, and lots of thinner, 90% thinner. And I'll just give our little base a little go with this. Close to the grass. And it doesn't really matter which, if you go to your local hobby shop and they only have, say, this wild grass in, in uh, you know, weird colors, bright, bright green or evergreen colors, buy it anyway if that's all he's got because I'm going to, and you guys are going to spray them anyway. So it doesn't matter which color that he might have in stock. Just even if it came in pink, it wouldn't bother me at all because it's going to get a full thing of paint
Now this is a loosey goosey spray. I don't want to cover up all the beige that I just did, so um, I'll just creep on up into here a little bit. I haven't laid the grass down on this side, so I don't want to go too far. Anyway, you can see how it's starting to take place. A little bit of khaki in this grass here. So you can now see um, those individual little stones popping out. And the reason they're popping is because almost microscopic shadows are underneath these stones. And you can see how they pop out. So that's back to this illustration. Um, that is the reason why they, they pop out. It's because they're not covered in a white glue that is burying them underneath all the sand and jazz. The, they're not buried underneath the, you know, and blending into the groundwork. They're on top of the glue and therefore creating this nice little shadow. So once again, I'm gonna switch out this khaki to a nice green color, and I'm gonna start coloring in the grass. So just bear with me one second and I'll just change the colors and um, get a nice green color for it. And okay, so now I'm gonna go. add a little bit of color to this grass, but before I do, I just want you, you guys to notice the color of this grass. It's, it's obviously got texture in it and different bits of color in it now with using khaki and buff over top. If you're going to do a fall setting or um, a setting maybe just coming out of the winter, this is the type of color that you're going to be looking for. So it's basically the color of the grass plus buff plus khaki. And um, so, if, like I say, if you're doing the, you know, the sort of March, April type of setting for your tanks, perfect coloring. Now I'm going to switch mine right into the summer by using the green and right off the hop I'm just going to use straight out XF number four just give it a quick little um, And don't worry at all if you your overspray goes onto the ground. Don't panic whatsoever. That's how grass works. There's miniature, you know, freshly growing grass on your groundwork. So um, don't hesitate if a little bit of yellow gets onto your earth color. Now I'm just gonna use a Tamiya number XF5 shake it up a little bit, mix it in with the number four and start getting the green in there. This is a great color for groundwork. And always, once you pour it, if you're pouring it like I am, clean it off a little bit so that it's not so hard to unscrew the cap three months from now. It'll just slide right off. But if you don't do what I just did, which is wiping the cap, as you guys know, you're dipping it in hot water and you're doing all kinds of funny things to get the lid off the cap. So I'm not giving it full coverage, just coverage. This grass is almost done. And you can definitely see that it's becoming the 
And now you have the buff, the khaki, the number four, to me, a yellow by itself. And now you've added, to me, a number five, which is a really, really bright green. So now you have about, well, you have at least four colors going on in your grass. It's way more interesting doing that than to just bombard it with, uh, to me, a number five and calling it a day. It's taken me very little time to put this grass together, as you guys have seen. The result is it's an advanced technique with, you know, very little effort. So the result is very good. And then you just drop your uh, your columns back in and look at how that column fits. Now, it helps that the column is has a reddish hue to it against the green, but that's deliberate. So um, now later on, as this project takes place, we're, we're going to mount these down with weld bond and they're probably going to sit in there. But um, as you can see, now it's, it's the diorama in very little time is starting to take place. And then, of course, this one here. Now, the only grass I've planted is the grass along there, but I'm going to show you guys how to plant it. As you can see, I use no static. I use no um, birthday balloons to bring the um, static grass up. Um, again, it's a combat zone. Earth is thrown from explosions nearby. Um, it pushes down the grass. It lands on the grass. It, you know, gets trampled by the, the retreating armies and what have you, the advancing armies. So. I don't worry too much that the grass is not standing straight up. It's 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 just not in the in the worry column for me. So what I'll do is um now that this flat black is dried for about ten minutes or so or fifteen minutes that we painted it, I'm actually gonna show you guys how I put this grass onto here. And um the reason I didn't do it immediately is because this is going on to a porous um, plaster and I want the black to get into the to the stuff a little bit so as you guys know 15 to 20 minutes ago we sprayed this black it's dry now thoroughly dry now I'm gonna put the grass on it just to show you guys how to do that alrighty so just give me a minute I'll prepare some white glue some weld bond and uh, show you guys how to do that 